Okay, hi guys. So we're going to talk here about how we get images from Photoshop into Final Cut Pro 10, specifically photographic images. And as we go along, we'll mention a few tips and tricks for getting images in. And in particular, thinking about image size and how your images are going to work within your Final Cut Pro 10 edit. So the first thing to think about is resolution. So we're going to have a look at setting up a new project. And then as we look at our images in Photoshop, we'll think about the image size and what type of image size will work best when we're working within Photoshop and then bring those images into Final Cut Pro 10. So if you go to File and New, I have a library set up here, so I'm just gonna create a new timeline or project, and, and I'm just gonna call this project Image Resolution, okay? And we're gonna jump into the custom video properties here, because that's what we're really interested in, is the file size that we're working on. Now, when we're thinking about resolution here, I'm normally outputting to an online format, so thinking about YouTube or Vimeo or other online platforms. So for those formats, you'll always be working with square pixels. Now, if you've not come across square pixels before, basically not every pixel is equal, and some pixels have a slightly more rectangular format, um, but all screen-based pixels for the web or for working on your computer screen will be square. Um, normally, in old broadcasting formats such as NTSC or PAL, you would have experienced the need to work with a pixel aspect ratio that was different to a square pixel aspect ratio. So let's just have a look at what we have here. So if we go, for instance, to PAL SD, okay, the resolution for these will be 720 by 576. But actually, when you bring that to broadcast, it would be 768 by 576, so the pixels stretch when you put them on screen, okay? Now we're normally talking, when we're working for the web, about two main formats, and that is 720p, okay, and 1080p. Now normally there'll be no reason to use any other image formats, okay? So we're gonna work with 720p, which is a great HD format that's useful for broadcasting on the web. It'll look nice and sharp, nice and crisp, and it will also give you a slightly lower file size. Now the other thing to think about here as well when you're setting up a project is that 720p compared to 1080p will have a lot shorter rendering times, okay? So if you're working on a laptop and you're trying to get your content out quickly, but you're compositing a lot of images within Final Cut Pro 10, then 720p may be the better option. And when you're broadcasting stuff like software tutorials or video blogs, 720p is perfect, okay? So we'll stick with that, okay? Now the resolution here is 1280 by 720, and this is where things kind of get interesting. So we have 960 by 720, which is a different pixel aspect ratio for 720p, okay? We're always gonna stick with 1280 by 720, which is the square pixel format um, for 720p. The 960 pixel width will stretch to 1280 when you actually output it or broadcast it, but 1280 will be what most people will wanna work with. And then we have the frame rate, okay? So we're gonna stick with 30p. So basically we wanna create all our images so that they're bigger or the same size as our timeline setup, okay? So that's what we wanna keep in mind when we jump into Photoshop here. So we're gonna skip across to Photoshop here and I'm just using Command and Tab to jump from one application to another, okay? And you can see here we've got some images that we're gonna look at and we're gonna talk about the way that you can know whether they're suitable to bring into Final Cut Pro 10 or whether you're gonna lose a little bit of image quality. So the first thing here is we'll just skip through these. We can see we've got some landscape images and we've got one portrait image, okay? Now, if we just have a skim across the top here, we can see that the percentage was zoomed in is different for each of these, which indicates that these are all a slightly different resolution. So let's have a look at our first landscape image here. And I'm just gonna pull this to the, the left so we've kind of got them in image size order. So this is one of the smallest size landscape images that I'm working with. And if you go to image and image size, we can see that it's 1840 by 1230, okay? So this is great for importing into a 1280 by 720 or 720p project in Final Cut Pro, but if you're wanting to import it into a 1920 project at that higher HD resolution, then you're gonna lose a little bit of image quality because you're gonna to need to increase the size of it to fill your screen, or you're gonna to have to wrap it into a frame of, of some description, okay? So this is smaller than our highest video resolution, okay? Now often you'll find this with older digital cameras, or if you scan stuff in from a film, it may be a lower resolution than 1920p that you're working with, okay? So let's just uh, click okay there. Let's have a look at the, the hot air balloon image that we've got here. And if we go to image size, okay, then, we can see that it's 2,855 by 1938, okay? So it's way bigger 
than 1920 by 1080, which means that we'll be able to zoom into it and zoom out of it. So if we're using something like the Ken Burns effect in Final Cut Pro 10, then we can use that knowing that we're going to keep our image quality and we're not going to get any degradation of the image as we increase or decrease the size of it. Okay, so let's go to our other image here. And the image size for this is 4288. So over twice as wide as 1920 and high enough so we can zoom in and out of it. We've got lots of scope to, to kind of play with and work with this image, okay? So that's a quick intro to image size. And really you wanna get an understanding of moving between the image size in Photoshop and the image size in Final Cut Pro when you're setting up a new project so that you know that your images are gonna be the right size, okay? We're gonna to go to File, Import and Media, and we're just gonna to navigate to the, the desktop here. So we'll come to our Users folder into the desktop and we've got these four images, okay? So we can bring these images in here, and we'll just bring one in here actually, import that selected image. And in these options, I tend to leave the files in place. You can copy them into the library. As long as you're organizing your files and you know you're not gonna delete them, then that's fine to do. It means you don't end up with duplicates of images or videos. And then we can also create proxy media if we want to, and also look for people in our photographs as well, okay? So we'll turn this on, press, import okay now for the other images we'll just bring up our desktop one nice way of previewing your images in the desktop on mac os 10 is to actually just highlight an image and press the space bar you can do this with an image or with video and it will pop up this nice big preview and you can actually navigate through different images and video on the desktop without opening any application that's a real time saver sometimes okay so now we're going to drag these across into our library here, and we'll close this window. Okay, so let's have a look in Final Cut Pro 10 where we see some of the information that we were seeing in Photoshop. So if we go to Window, we're gonna show the inspector. Okay, inspector is really useful. It's definitely worth looking at this and understanding what goes on behind the scenes in Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, so we've got our market image. We can see the resolution of it. Okay, we can see that it's a JPEG from this and we can see the same information for those other images. So we've got some nice information here that's gonna help us to find out what kind of images we're using, okay? If we scroll down one of these images, okay, you can see we can also reveal that image in the finder, which is really useful. So if you're working Final Cut Pro 10 and you're trying to find out where your files are or find out which file to edit in Photoshop, one of the great things about bringing in images like this is that we can have a JPEG in here, we can use it in our project, but then we can also bring it back into Photoshop, edit it and Final Cut, Pro will keep that link, okay? So we can click Reveal in Finder here and it will take us straight to that image on the desktop. That is something that I use a lot in uh, different applications, but definitely in Final Cut Pro 10 too. And you can also right click here and use Reveal in Finder. Okay, so we have our images here. If we drag an image to the timeline, okay? Basically the image is gonna scale to fit the timeline. Now, this is good. It makes it nice and quick to get your image fitting within Final Cut Pro 10 but sometimes you don't wanna have that on. So if you go to the inspector with your image selected on the timeline, you can turn the spatial conform off, okay? So you've got fit, fill, which will fill the frame, which is a, another nice technique. Having the black letterboxing around the edge that you get when you're fitting an image doesn't work as well as having a, a frame filled, okay? And we can also turn it to none which will give you the image at its actual size, okay? So if we have an image selected here, and then we select the transform tool, we can now click on this image and move it around and reframe it. And then we can go on to do things like keyframing that image, animating it, rotating it, if we have any uh, corrections that we need to do. And you can see here that what we're looking at within Final Cut Pro 10 is a very small version of our image. And in Photoshop, we were looking at our images 100% to see what the actual pixel quality was of those images when we were looking at them. And I would recommend doing that in Final Cut Pro 10 too, or any image editing application is actually coming up to the zoom option here and just going to 100% and seeing how crisp your, your image is. Okay, and you can see you get this little navigator here which allows you to move around the canvas. And of course we can close other windows up like the browser in order that we can fit more of that preview onto our screen. Okay, let's bring back the, the browser. We need to see that for this. Okay, so it's worth zooming in and zooming out and you'll see if we come to this market image, for instance, that when we first drop it onto the timeline, if we're viewing it fit, it looks great. It even looks great if we increase the size of it okay but we're only looking at this at 37 percent. okay so we're not seeing a real 
example of how that's going to look when we've got it at 1280 by 720 on screen. It looks great in that smaller format, but if we go to 100%, then we'll see that the image is starting to break down a bit more. Okay. So the scale that we changed there, um, you can see across here in the inspector, we've changed it to 263%. So really what you've got in terms of working with image size is somewhere around 20%. So if you increase your image size by around 20% from an original, then you can get away with it, okay? So that's a good thing to bear in mind as you're working with images is that 100% value, okay? So there are a few tips for working with images in Final Cut Pro 10 for paying attention to the, the resolution, which is all important if you want nice crisp quality. Most DSLR images nowadays, most cell phone images nowadays that you take will be bigger than 1920 by 1080. So you shouldn't have any problems with image resolution, but nevertheless, it's worth keeping that in mind. One other place that you can source images from the internet is one location where you might find photographic images that are smaller. And if you jump into a site like Google Images, which we'll have a look at now, then you can see, I've just done a quick search for, for cats on images.google.com, okay? And you can see that we've got a nice uh, array of cat images that we could use. The important thing to pay attention to here is the little resolution that, that pops up at the bottom here, okay? So 1000 by 781 is slightly smaller than 1280, so it's a smaller size image. And we can even find images that are 625 by 500, which if you actually pump that up to 1280 by 720, it's gonna look pretty pixelated, okay? So if you're wondering why images that you've downloaded from the web are pixelated, then that could be one of those reasons, okay? So if you wanna make sure that you're getting images from the web or from Google, um, wherever you're searching, then you can use the search tools here um, in Google and manage the, the size that you're searching for. So for instance, if we go down, we can choose large, medium, or larger than, okay? And if we pick larger than 1024 by 768, most of those images are gonna be larger than 1280 by 720, um, which would be the size that we want. So you can see this is a 1920 by 1080 image, and that's the size that we would want to be using, okay? If you wanna download images from Google, then just click on the image, okay? And then once you've got it up here, just go to view image, and it will normally link you to the, the image on its own, and you can just go to file save or right click and save image to download or save image as and you can then import that image into final cut pro 10. okay so that's a quick mention of uh images on the web and at that point we'll wrap it up if you have any questions about images or about working with images in final cut pro 10 then please don't hesitate to, to send me a tweet at ben Housel, and i look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial